eight inductors one or part one induced voltage and current induction is used to generate electricity it always involves a changing magnetic field in or near a coil or near a solenoid a solenoid is simply a long coil a current is induced or is produced in the coil when a magnet is moved either in or out of the coil as this diagram illustrates this magnet is being moved into the coil as a result current is induced in the coil the basic idea is when a piece of wire like this one here cuts across magnetic field lines these are magnetic field lines going north or south then EMF or voltage will be induced or produced in the wire which will produce current if the circuit is complete the circuit is complete therefore current will be flowing like this this piece of conductor is being moved this way at a speed V and length L is the part of the conductor that's inside the magnetic field as a result the magnetic field lines are being cut by the conductor and there will be induced EMF or voltage across the conductor which will produce current flowing th around this closed loop and here's a formula for the induced voltage equal to BVL B is the magnetic field V is speed L is the length of the conductor here this right hand slap rule will help you determine the direction of the induced current first of all you have these fingers pointing upward in the direction of the field lines which is upward the thumb points in the direction of the movement of the conductor this piece of conductor is being moved that way then the palm slaps in the direction of the induced current so in this conductor here the induced conventional current flows that way but the electron current flows that way as shown here these positive particles are moving that way these negative particles which are electrons moving the other way Lenz's law first of all the principle of conservation of energy says energy cannot be created or destroyed it can only be changed from one form to another and Lenz's law is based on this law of conservation of energy and states that an induced current causes a force to oppose the change which produce it. This means that work has to be done to produce electrical energy. You have to put in something to get something out of it. He says we will revisit the movement of a bar magnet into a coil in on the next slide. Now let's see how Lenz's law applies to this situation here. This magnet with the leading pole of North Pole is being moved into the coil and the coil will produce a North Pole here to repel this North Pole and to produce North Pole here the current in the coil must flow that way to help you determine that you can use right hand grip rule now let's look at the concept of magnetic flux which is symbolized by this great letter phi. This is different from magnetic field, which is symbolized by B. Here we have a rectangular loop of wire sitting inside this magnetic field. These crosses mean the magnetic field lines are going into the page. So the magnetic flux phi is equal to the magnetic field strength B times the area of the loop of wire and the area is simply length times width length and width and the unit of magnetic flux phi is Weber WB Faraday's law this law states that the induced voltage V equals a rate of change of magnetic flux so it's delta phi over T the rate of change of flux phi 
So V is the induced voltage. Delta phi is a change in flux. T is the time taken for the change of flux. And the negative sign indicates that to induce current causes a magnetic force to oppose a change that produces it. That's Lenz's law. Now compare this formula with that formula. It's really the same formula expressed in two different ways. In this example here, this loop of wire is being moved into this magnetic field. And you are asked to calculate the change of flux delta phi. You just have to rearrange this formula and drop in the negative sign and you get that. V times T. The final answer is 0.0090 Weber.